Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Today we will discuss very important topic that is parts of speech. Parts of speech plays very important role in grammar. Words are divided into different kinds, classes called part of speech according to their use, according to the work they do in a sentence. So we can say a part of speech is just a name given to words based on its job in a sentence. Think of part of speech is like job titles. Just like a person can be a teacher or doctor, a word can be a verb, adjective, noun, etc. Depending on job it does in a sentence. Uh, this can be very useful to learn because when you are studying grammar you will come across terms like these terms like noun pronoun and if you know what they mean it can helps you to speed up your study of grammar now the question is that how many parts of speech are there so there are eight parts of speech noun pronoun verb adverb, adjective, conjunction, preposition, and interjection. So let's try to understand what they do and how can we use them. So our first part of speech is a noun. A noun is a word used as the name of a person, place, or things. The word thing includes all objects that we can see, hear, taste, touch, or smell. And something that we can think of but cannot perceive the senses like feeling and emotions, ideas. Let's look into this example. Ashok is a nice boy. You can see here that Ashok is noun. Uh, Ashok is a name, hence noun. And I have used boy representing a common noun. Our second example is, Rosie went to Malta on vacation with her family last year. Can you identify all noun in the sentence? Yes, the first noun is Rosie. Rosie is the name of person. Second noun is Malta. Malta is name of the place. It's actually a small little island country in Europe. Our next noun is vacation. Vacation is name giving to type of trip that people take. And after that, noun after that is family. Family is a group of people who are related like mother, father, son, son daughter. And our last noun is year. Year is just, three, uh, year is a name giving to 365 days. Our second part of speech is a pronoun. A pronoun is a word, is a pronoun is a word used instead of a noun. You may think, why does the pronoun do so? Why it replaces noun? Because we cannot write a name every time in a sentence, so we use pronoun. For example, John is absent because he is ill. Aliza is a good dancer. She loves dancing. Here I, I use pronoun at the place of noun, so I've replaced noun. Let's have a look into this example. Mehrab is at the movie with Mehrab friends. Mehrab really enjoys spending time with Mehrab friends. Now, of course, that sounds really stupid and that is because we uh, keep repeating Mehrab, Mehrab, Mehrab. That is very unnatural. We do not talk like that. And to avoid that kind of repetition, we use pronoun. So, we can say... Mehrab is at the movie with his friend. He really enjoys spending time with them. Our third part of speech is a verb. Verbs are probably most important words in English language. And that is for two reasons. First, every sentence in English language must have a verb. You cannot have a sentence without verb in English. And second reason is verb have tenses. Now I'm sure you know about past tense, present tense, future tense. That is how we talk about different times. And to do that, we 
change form of verb so verbs are very important now what does a verb do a verb is a word used to express an action or state and by state means a situation so let's have a look into this example i'm writing a book now writing is an action so i have underlined writing in second sentence the second sentence is i'm a teacher now can you tell me which is the verb the verb in that is uh, the verb in this sentence is am that basically a verb be or to be but we use uh, but we say i am you are etc etc i want you to notice a very big difference between these two sentences notice in the first sentence we are talking about a physical thing because writing is something we do physically but in second sentence we are not talking about any physical action we are just saying i'm a teacher we call that a state that means a situation so verbs can show action or they can show state or situation a next part of his speech is an adjective an adjective is a word used to add something to the meaning of noun like he is a brave boy here brave is adjective used for boy and boy is noun she is a tall girl tall is representing something about noun now i have uh, there are 20 boys in this class now i have underlined 20 because uh, remember that thing that we also use adjective to show characteristics quality of something or quantity of something so that's why i have underlined 20 here our next example is they drive an amazing big red sports car this is actually they okay in this example we are actually giving the answer of few question like what is your opinion about car it's amazing what size is the car big what color of the car it's red what type of car is it it's a sport car so in this example the noun we are interested in is car and all of those are adjective who are giving some answer about nouns you look into them detail you observe the answer question like what color what size Adje adjective amazing give us the opinion about the car that what is your opinion about the car okay that all grace i don't know if you notice that there is actually one more adjective in this sentence and that is and words like a and the call article in english language and articles are also adjective because they give information about noun that comes after in this sentence we know that they drive one car because of because we said an a next part of speech is an adverb an adverb is a word used to add something to the meaning of verb an adjective or an other adverb an adverb answer question like when why how in what way etc and please don't get confused between adjectives and adverbs both are quite different he finished the work quickly quickly is adverb using for work which is verb this flower is very beautiful so i'm using very to enhance the beauty of flower such words are called an adverb preposition a preposition is word used with a noun or pronoun to show how the person or thing denoted by the noun or pronoun stands in relation to something else that means preposition used to show some relation or state of something there is a bird in garden you can see 
I'm telling about bird and I'm using in to denote location of the bird. Prepos preposition or words like an, in, at, by, from, with, before and after. These words help to show relationship in time, place and position. For example, here is a common thing we say to the people that I will see you at the office on Monday. There are two prepositions in this sentence, at and on. The first preposition at shows us the place, where, at the office. And the second preposition shows the time, when, on Monday. That what preposition, this is what preposition do. They help us to show time, place and position. Conjunction. A conjunction is a word used to join words or sentence. Conjunction helps to connect idea. Sarah and Jasmine are best friends. Can you say which the conjunction is? The conjunction is N. It helps to connect Sarah and Jasmine, both of which are noun. Uh, conjunction can even connect noun as I mentioned in the definition. Like, I didn't go to school today because I don't feel very well. Here are two sentences. We call them class. The first, sorry, the second class, I don't feel very well is reason. And the first class, I didn't go to school today is a result. So, conjunction because show us reason and result in relation. Our last part of speech is an interjection. An interjection is a word which expresses some sudden feeling. Now, interjections are words. They do not have real meaning but they help us to show some sudden emotion or exclamation. Like interjection, wow shows um, something amazing, shows happiness. This, wow, this house is so beautiful. Like hurrah, we won the match. Th that hurrah also shows some excitement, some exclamation. Um, mm, like I'm saying, oh, I can't open the jar. Like I'm trying to open a jar of cookies and I can't open it. So I say, oh. I can't open it. So it shows anger and frustration. Now these are eight parts of speech. If you find any difficulty, any ambiguity, your questions are most welcome. Thank you for what for listening. In this lecture, we are going to talk about an other very important class of word that is used in English language and they are referred as articles. First of all, why they are important? Why do we study them? Well, don't we use noun in our daily life? We do, right? Whenever we use noun, we need to specify them as specific and uh, unspecific. We need uh, to maybe designate them as a specific or non-specific. So, how do we do that? We can only do that with the help of articles. So, now you understand how important are these. So, let us go and study about them. Now, these are special words used before noun. Define a noun as specific or unspecific. Basically, there are three articles we use in a sentence. They are A and the. A and A and an are called as indefinite articles. And the is called the definite articles. So, a and use as an indefinite articles and the is definite article so we can make it more clear to the person who is listening us now these articles are governed by various rules so 
let us see the rules who make more clear the usage of articles one more important thing before we dig into the rules that i've told you in my previous lecture that articles are adjectives so because uh, they gave us some information about noun or pronoun so articles are demonstrative adjectives now let's dig into the rules now the rule number one is use a before consonant sound and use un before vowel sound now it, this is very important we mostly made this mistake that we use uh, a with consonant not the later start with consonant sound so we use a before consonant sound and we will use uh, an before vowel sound let's have a look into this example a cat a dog a boy a girl a house a tree so in all of these words you can see they start with consonant sound a cat cat start with k dog start with d a boy boy start with b these are consonant sounds and notice that in natural speech we do not say a we say a and in speech we do not say an we say un now let's have a look into this example an apple an engineer an ice cream an old man so an apple 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 engineer ice cream these words are starting with the vowel sound so just keep this uh, thing uh, in your mind that we use a before consonant sound and un before vowel sound now let's see that what is rule number 2 Rule number two is use a or an with singular countable nouns. Now we all are aware of what are countable nouns. Think which can count it. Those countable nouns which are in their singular forms. It is only then you will use a or an. Like a book. I am using a. with book because it is singular countable noun but here i'm not choosing a with paintings because paintings is a uh, paintings is a plural a dog an easy task an instrument a cat uh, an elephant a teacher now we can say six elephant ten teacher and so on but an elephant a teacher that is singular noun but if you say six elephant ten teacher then they are noun but in their plural forms uncountable nouns are which cannot be counted noun like water sugar love so uh, we cannot use a uh, or un with them rule number 3 is a or an is used to refer to things which are unknown to the listener the is used to think that are known to the listener let's have a look at the example i have two dresses in my cupboard a red and a pink a red and a pink one what did we use a hair we use a hair because we were introducing a red and a pink dress for the first time now the listener is unknown about the pink and red dress so because of which we are using a with with it now let's have a look to the next part of the sentence the red one belongs to me but the pink one belongs to my sister Now the listener is already aware of pink and red dress because of which you going to use the Second example is I ate 
an apple yesterday the apple was juicy and delicious and that is writing mistake that is an apple obviously when you introduce it is new to your listener that why you are using a now your listener is already known that about what you are talking about so you start using the with it but in next example uh, we are saying there are some drops of water on the table now why did we use the here of course the question might be coming to your mind we introduced table for the first time the answer to this question is that now imagine this is a conversation that is going on with someone so you say there are some drops of water on table because you are talking about something which you already giving information about it so table uh, so the table because you already give information about the table now it become known to the listener that's why we are using the in that sentence the next example is where is the pen that i gave you yesterday so here you already given description because of which again we are using the now what is rule number 4 rule number 4 is use a or on to talk about non specific things or people let's have a look into this example do you have a pen now if i ask this question that probably uh, mean i need a pencil to write now i say a pencil because that means any pencil i don't care about any specific pencil compared to this next sentence is do you have the pencil that khalil gave you here i am verifying to specific thing now next example if you are feeling sick you should go and see a doctor may you are saying this to give advice to your friend who is not feeling very well here we do not mean to go any specific doctor that means any doctor but let's say if your friend uh, takes your advice uh, and he visited a doctor so now you say what did the doctor say so the doctor we are using that doctor because we mean that specific doctor your friend visited so notice again we use a or un talking about a person in general and not specific person or thing now rule number 5 that is rule number 5 by mistakenly i have written 4 that is rule number 5 uh, use a or un to mention the category or type of uh, of a person or thing to understand this let's have a look into these example sangeeta is a doctor by profession now there are so many professions so we are saying a doctor mentioning the category let's have a look to rule number 5 rule number 5 is use a or an to mention the category or type of a person or thing to under to understand this let's have a look into these example sangeeta is a doctor by profession now there are so many profession so we are saying a doctor means mentioning the category Let's have a look into an other example that his laptop is a Dell version 4 because there is entire category of many product of that particular thing so there uh, there so you have to use a or an to specify particular category now she is an amazing dancer riaz always wanted to be a doctor whenever you are talking about particular category then you will gonna use a or an 
all of these nouns are kinds of category so to which you have to use a or an with it be, with it bears it it is been a consonant or vowel sound rule number 6 no article should be used to generalize plural or uncountable nouns where is a or unused generalized singular singular countable nouns plural and count uncountable noun does not no, does not require any article so when you have to generalize plural or uncountable you do not need any article for example i prefer coffee over tea so coffee and tea are uncountable nouns because of which there is no requirement of using article a uh, or an dogs are very loving we use a hair because it's a singular noun but a dog is a very loving animal uh, we are using a with a dog is very loving animal because it's a singular noun but with dogs are very loving animal they are in plural form so there is no need of using a or an last rule rule number 7 no article should be used with proper nouns no proper nouns like pakistan karachi dubai but there is some exception so like we say the usa uh sorry the west indies the middle east the uk the himalaya other than that no need of using articles we do not use article with the name of languages or ga- games like urdu english french cricket etc etc and we also don't use article with fixed expression there are few noun which are fixed expression whenever you use them in your language there's no need of using article so these are various rules of using articles in your language if you feel any confusion any ambiguity you are welcome to ask any question thank you
Every educated person should know how to write a clear and readable letter. Everyone has some time to write business letter of some sort and may have to face the problem of writing an important letter that will vitally affect his interest in life. The art of letter writing is, therefore, no mere ornamental accomplishment, but something that every educated person must acquire for practical reasons. So, today we will learn very important topic of writing skill, that is letter writing. In this video, we will learn what letter writing is, types of letter writing and forms. But before that, we need to understand what letter is. According to Oxford Dictionary, a letter is a message that is written down or printed on a paper and usually put in an envelope and sent to somebody. Letter is important symbol of human civilization. It has been used as a media of exchanging information from the primitive age. Letter can be categorized into different types based on formalities maintained, information content, purpose of use, etc. etc. So, a letter is a written message which is conveyed one person to other generally via post. Or we can say it is communication in written form. It is a mean of communication which was used in ancient time. Now, as the technology advanced, we have many other means of communication. But still we use formal and informal letters many a times to converse. Letters are mainly divided into two types, informal and formal. So, what I mean by informal and formal? Informal English is something that you write to your friend, something you would write to your parents. And formal English we use with strangers, we use with our boss. So, it is a way where you really think about and informal is kind of a relaxing English. So, informal letters contain personal communication. Informal letters are written to friends or close family members. Where a formal letter contain business or professional purpose. Formal letter is a letter written to the person who may not known person whom we may not know personally, but we want to discuss certain issue or problem with them. Informal letter contain casual or emotional tone, where formal letter have simple language. Informal letters are written to family member or close friend, where Form, formal letters are written for business or professional purpose. Formal letter can be a business letter, official letter, letter to editor, letter to principal, letter for job application, where formal or personal letter, as I told you, are written to friends or family. Business letter. Business letter can be letter of inquiry or information, placing or cancelling order, letters of acknowledgments and replies. Official letter. Official letter can be letters of inquiry, letters of complaint, letter for request or appeals. Letters to editor. Letters of informing or suggesting on any issue of public interest.
right a uh, job application where we want to apply for any particular job so we write letters for job here are some tips for writing formal and informal letters so in formal english we use contraction like didn't wouldn't now what are contraction if you see a verb with apostrophe and then a t that is a contraction it is very important to know because in formal writing we don't use contraction so didn't wouldn't would be did not would not and other difference between informal and formal writing is use of idiom idiom means certain expression but if we are writing a formal letter we will not use idiom phrasal verb what are the phrasal verb it is a verb that has a preposition for example find out find is a verb out is a preposition so preposition adds a different meaning to the verb so in formal writing we use phrasal verb where in formal writing we do not use phrasal verb in formal writing we use verb uh, we use longer words which have similar meaning for example here we write find out and in formal and in formal writing we are not using phrasal verb but we are using word discover discover now they both have similar meaning but we don't use phrasal verb in informal writing imperative now imperative are the sentence that start with a verb like send it soon do not do not talk to me that way help your mother do your homework parents love to use imperative so do teacher in formal writing we do not use imperative they are too strong we find to use more polite sentence like here i'm using polite sent here i'm using you may send it to your earliest convenience tv tv is a abbreviation the short form of a word the actual word is television so don't use abbreviation in formal writing these few tips will be very helpful for you in writing formal and informal letter format of letter writing in all kinds of letter there are six point of form to be attended to namely heading in heading we have sender details that means sender names address comes and he is and sender is the one who is writing a letter and date on which the letter is written and then comes receiver's detail name and address then comes subject it is used so the receiver immediately know what the letter is about the courteous greeting or salutation the communication or message the body of letter number 5 the subscription or courteous leave taking or conclusion and number 6 the signature and name we start by writing writer's address date then a blank line then receiver's name and designation followed by the address then blank line and then write your subject of the date write your salutation followed with comma subscription is the way you end your letter then comes signature followed by name and designation 
now you can see that here all are left aligned there is another format for this format everything remains same except that the letter letter writer's address and date and subscription the signature and name and designation are written right in line you can write letter with either ways in this lecture we are going to discuss another very important topic and that is transitive and intransitive verbs transitive verb a sentence with a transitive verb has a subject a verb and direct object a direct object is a person or thing that is acted upon the subject so a transitive verb always takes an object let's have a, uh, have a look into these examples danish kicked football mark is writing a letter david is eating a sandwich in order to understand these example first we need to understand what is a direct object object is a noun or pronoun that receives the action of a verb or shows the result of the action it answer the question whom or what after an action verb an action verb with a direct object is called a transitive verb now how to find a direct object in order to find the direct object there are two questions you must ask number one does the sentence have an action verb the sentence must have an action verb in order to have a direct object number two who or what receives the action of the verb this answer will give you the direct object so to find whether the given verb is transitive or intransitive the very basic tool is to find is object if ob whether direct object is available or not so as we learn to find the direct object we need to ask two question that is what and second one is whom keep this thing in your mind that what we use for non living things and whom we use for human being so whenever you are getting answer of what or whom that means the object is available and if you are not getting the answer of what or whom that means object is not present in the sentence let's have ex uh, let's have this example i meet aisha first ask what is the action verb and my verb is meet now aisha is a human being so i have to ask whom i meet the answer will be aisha so our object is aisha and our transitive verb is meet intransitive verb a sentence with intransitive verb only has a subject and a verb the subject is the person or thing that is doing the action so the very basic difference be, different be, different between transitive and intransitive verb is availability of object jasmine is smiling so here verb smiling is intransitive verb that's all in subject and a verb and other example mark is sleeping so mark is the person doing the action and the action is sleeping so sleeping again is intransitive verb sara is walking prepositional phrases or adverbal phrases are often are often after intransitive verb 
sorry that's an intransitive verb sara is walking to the office to the office is prepositional fred it is a preposition of place but be careful this is not a direct object how do we know well let's do our test question if i say sara is walking what i'm getting no answer and if i say sara is walking whom i'm getting no answer since there is no answer there is no direct object to the office to the office is like where is sara going so sara is walking to the office but that's not a direct object the old man laughed loudly here is a verb laughed but loudly is not person or thing it's just an adverb that gives us information about laugh so if you ask question old man laugh who you get no answer that's how you know that verb is intransitive rana uh, rena was laughing while watching tv now laughing is a verb so here we have to see object is available or not so if i ask the question what or whom the answer is not available to get the answer i need to ask why was rena laughing so here i'm getting the answer of why not what or whom they went singapore in this vacation so they went singapore so here i have to ask like where did they go and i'm getting the answer singapore so again i'm not getting the answer of what or whom that means this verb is intransitive verb but now the example is that she is running after verb nothing is there i'm not getting answer of what or whom in a sentence where object is available these verb will be transitive and where object is not available they are intransitive verbs something is there which you need to keep in your mind now student gets confused uh, that uh, we are getting the answer of what or whom even though you are denying that object is not there why so let's have example lion is a dangerous animal now if you ask what is a dangerous animal you are getting the answer lion is a dangerous animal but i am saying that that's not a object why because this is the place of subject if you are getting the answer of what or whom for the subject place that does not means it's object now see an other example teaching is a good profession so what is a good profession you are getting the answer of what teaching but you are getting the answer where at the subject place so this is not a direct object but if i say she kick football football is after verb so that's a our object common example common examples of intransitive verb this verb only exists as intransitive like arrive die fall go laugh sleep smile stay let's have an example my cat died now there is no object we cannot say my cat died died but there are also some verb that are intransitive but also exist as transitive verb close eat open play run sit stand walk let me give you an example of eat if it is intransitive we can simply say that i'm eating no object just i'm eating but we also say i'm eating a sandwich now there it is a transitive verb because there is a direct object so certain verbs can be both transitive and intransitive some words can be transitive or intransitive with the same meaning
intransitive verb the door open transitive verb i open the door but the meaning of open is the same jan is reading transitive jan is reading a book action of the read is same the children are playing last night we played cards now we have object here but the overall general meaning of play is same means to enjoy yourself do some activity some words can be transitive or intransitive with different meaning like mark is sitting on a chair it's a physical action that means this verb is intransitive because it simply describes physical position but mark is sitting in exam this is transitive verb because mark, here it means mark is taking exam same word sit but it change its meaning completely from where it is intransitive to when it is transitive this is why this lesson is so important to understand the difference between transitive and intransitive verb thank you for watching this video. اوس بلا من شیطان رجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم آئی ہوپ دیٹ یو آل آر فائن سو وی ہیو لرن کوائٹ بٹ آف گرامر اینڈ ناؤ ہاؤ ڈو وی ایکچولی گیٹ آل گرامر ان ٹو پکچر وائل وی آر اسپیکنگ اور وائل وی آر کنوینگ واٹ ایور وی وانٹ تھرو واٹ ایور موڈ سو ڈیورنگ دس پروسیس وین وی آر کمیونیکیٹنگ ود ادر ان انگلش لینگویج We, want, we might want to portray in other ways. We might want to portray actively strong with strong voice and direct message. Or else we might want to portray passively. It means we are conveying passively. It is not as strong as we convey actively or direct. These are two different ways in which we convey the message we want to the listener. This is however we want to portray. Now that we know these active and passive are two ways or two tonalities of conveying message, let's go and study about them. Now, before discussing how can we convert active into passive or vice versa, we should know the meaning of voice and why we only discuss active and passive. So in English grammar, Verb have five properties, voice, mode, tense, person, number. Here we are concerned with voice. In English grammar, voice doesn't mean the sound you make when you speak. It shows whether the subject of the sentence is doing the action or having the action done on it. It has the two types, active and passive. So, Voice is a form of verb which shows whether the subject acts or is acted upon. So, by the help of voice, we get to know what the subject is doing or the subject is acting or is acted upon. Active and passive voice. In active voice sentences, the subject is the one doing the action. In passive voice sentence, the subject is being acted upon. For example, Sahil blows the candle. Passive. The candles are blown by Sahil. So, when the subject of the sentence performs the verb section, we say that the sentence is in the active. Sentence in the active voice have strong, direct and clear tone. In active voice, subject perform the action and object who, whom action is being performed. So, your active voice follow subject, verb and object construct. construct. And this is, this is the voice that we use most of the time. In the passive voice, the subject receives the action of verb. In a passive voice sentence, The subject and object flip-flop. The subject becomes passive recipient of the action. Since the 
object of a verb in active voice become the subject of the passive form it follows that only transitive verb can use in the passive voice because an intransitive verb has no object let's have a look into this example richard writes a letter this sentence is in active form so what is richa 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 is our subject our verb is writes and a letter is our object so we have discussed it that our active uh, voice sentences follows subject verb and object construct so such form is called active voice but if you see a letter is written by richard here we understand that some work is going on with subject that is a letter in active voice subject perform the action and object receives the action so here our subject is richa and our object is later but in passive passive is used to show interest in the person or object experience the action rather than the person performing it the order is reverse here so in passive voice sentence verbs third form is used with by and subject and before verbs third form we use object here are some more examples of active and passive voice reason to use active most writers prefer to use active voice because it is more direct now let's compare active the waiter dropped the tray of food it is a direct voice passive a tray of food was dropped by the waiter the active voice is less, uh, less awkward and clear states relationship between subject and the action we generally use active voice so you must ask where to use passive voice there are generally two main cases to use passive voice number 1 when the agent or subject is unknown let's have a look into this example steve wallet was stolen here wallet is object and it was stolen but we don't know by whom we don't know the subject here so we can use passive voice and other example all the cookies have been eaten here we are not aware of the subject that who at the cookies so we can use passive voice here the second case when you want to give more important to the action rather than subject to perf who performed the action let's have example solar plant will be built in sakhar here we are giving more importance to the solar plant being built rather than the person who is building it the road is being repaired here also in this sentence we are not interested who is repairing the road or our focus is on road who is repairing now let's see how can we convert any active into passive voice there are basically five simple step converting active into passive first identify subject main verb and object in any sentence then second swap subject with the object third convert the main verb into the third form of the verb fourth put uh, fourth add the proper helping verb of the to be before the main verb and number 5 is add preposition by before the subject note that we use with not by to talk about an instrument used by the agent so 
the sentence structure of passive is object plus helping verb plus verbs third form plus by plus subject there are two important things that needs to be remembered while changing subject which is a pronoun to object then conversion will be like this i will become me we will become us you will become you they will become them he will become him she will become her how to convert active into passive there are 12 tenses in english all the sentence of 12 tenses in active cannot be converted into passive voice there are four tenses which cannot be converted into passive voice which are continuous future tense continuous perfect present tense continuous perfect past tense continuous perfect future tense in english grammar we do not convert sentence of these tenses it is not grammatically correct you need to pro you need the proper helping verb to be before main verb it is decided based on tenses with example of main verb take let's look into the different helping verb based on tenses one by one which we needed to learn present simple tense active voice take or takes in passive voice we add is am are depending on whether object is singular or plural and verb third form taken present continuous we have is am are uh, depending on subject and taking while in passive we add being helping verb with is am are and taking as a verb third form present perfect we use have taken while in passive voice we add have been taken simple past in active voice we use took which is verb past form from in present uh, past simple we ate was were helping and helping verb and verb third form taken past continuous we use was were and in passive was being or were being taken in past perfect we have had plus verb third form taken and while in passive we use had been and verbs third form taken simple future will take or shall take while in passive we use will be or shall be taken in future perfect we in active we have will have taken and passive will have been taken and can may must these are modals so with modal like can take must take and while in passive they become can be taken must be taken may be taken now i hope that you understand when to use the active voice and when to use passive voice Thank you for watching this video. Allah Hafiz.